The concerns about mercury levels in fish are completely misguided. This is what Chris Kesser says anyway. I agree with him 100%. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you four reasons why the concerns about getting mercury poisoning from eating too much fish is completely bogus. What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. You do have to share your own experience. So I'm about to share with you my story about eating tons of fish. Here's our fish. My personal experience has been that eating fish on almost a daily basis hasn't changed my mercury levels in a negative way in any way, shape, or form. I've been eating this way for three years. I've been very consistent with the amount of fish that I eat per week. I do eat specific fish, and I do choose specific fish for a reason. I'm gonna get into this later on in the video, though. Number two. And this is a big one. The science and the evidence suggests mercury issues don't apply to the fish that most people are eating on a regular basis. Salmon, tuna, catfish, tilapia, sardines and tuna. I might have said tuna twice. Those types of fish have no issues. Here's why. Let's take albacore tuna for example. The parts per million are 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 on average in one can of tuna. And I'm talking just basic old chunk white tuna from Starkist. Nothing organic, nothing special. The FDA safety level is 1.0. So according to the FDA standards of mercury in fish, a human being could eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner cans of tuna and still be way under the amount ppm that the fdaa thinks is safe consistent evidence shows that health benefits from consuming a variety of seafood in the amounts recommended outweigh the health risks associated with methylmercury this is the usda the hhs dietary guidelines for america fact number three is that research 100 percent ignores the role of selenium when it comes to mercury issues it's super basic i'm not going to get deep into the science but basically the fish that has more selenium than mercury in it is totally healthy and totally safe to eat in large amounts. Salmon, tuna, catfish, tilapia, all the fish I already named in this video all have much more selenium than they do mercury, which makes them safe. That's a basic one, pretty straightforward, moving on. And fact number four is that when you go really deep into the science and you actually pull it apart, studies of pregnant women show benefits from eating large amounts of seafood, not harm. A human mother with a baby growing in it is a fantastically marvelous thing that all humans strive to protect. So the science around it is always very on point and very, very careful. Conclusion, as the evidence above indicates, aside from the warnings to avoid shark, swordfish, tilefish, and king mackerel, varieties which contain far more mercury than selenium, the EPA slash FDA's advice to limit fish consumption during pregnancy is not only unfounded, it is potentially harmful. From a public health perspective, pregnant women should be eating more fish, not less. And I'm no expert in pregnancy and having a healthy birth, but I do know that the role of healthy fats and food that nourish the body are ultra important when growing a human inside of you. The easiest fats for the body to absorb and assimilate, especially when you're talking about protein on the assimilation scale, are things like salmon and other types of seafood. Seafood's high in omegas and actually really helps grow healthy tissue, healthy brain, healthy lungs. It basically comes down to this, my friends. If you're eating fish, even on a daily basis, that has more selenium than mercury, not only is it super healthy, you have no risk of the mercury issues at all. Evidence in the literature and the research kind of really shows that, and also my own personal evidence from eating tons of fish over the past three years shows that as well. And that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Leave all your comments and questions down below, and don't forget to subscribe and share. Hit that notification bell. Smash that like if you enjoyed the video. For those of you looking to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there's a link in the description box for a consultation. That same link will take you to my website where you can pick up the three phases workbook, which is the step-by-step -step guide for naturally healing eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis. Last but not least, down in the description box is a link for Skinessa, which is the only probiotic I've ever used. It's the only probiotic I really ever recommend. 
and it is absolutely amazing. I take it every single day. For those of you who are international, I know you guys ask me a lot, when is Scanessa gonna be available outside of the United States? And I'm not sure, all I can tell you guys is that I'm doing two things. One, is I'm working on something internationally that can take the spot of Scanessa. Number two, um, I've definitely urged Scanessa to do their best to get uh, international distribution license, which they are diligently working on. They're an absolutely amazing company. Um, it's why I work with them. It's why I love the owners. They are all about helping the skin health community. And as soon as they can get their product worldwide, trust me, they will. So hold tight, keep checking in. Um, and like I said, I'll look for a backup, but it's kind of hard because I'm super, super picky. Anyway, love you guys, much luck on your skin health journey, and I'll be back with many more videos really soon, peace. And strangely enough in this video, I did actually do some scientific research. Not that I don't normally, but links to some of the articles I talked about below, links below, links are below.